Oh, hello, this is Tak Chung from Walk with Tak. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, please feel free to write to me at walkwithtak at gmail.com. Uh, if you have any question regarding to this video or any videos that I have posted in the past, if you have any videos that you would like me to make, uh, please let me know. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Well, spring is here. Uh, next to our uh, house, we have a lot of bluebells. And here they are. A salmon is uh, one of my wife's favorite food, uh, if not the most favorite. Now, every time when I post a salmon dish, my wife always asks me, did you get a lot of views? And my answer is no. And she said, why? Why people don't like salmon? Well, I think I kind of understand that because I used to have a friend and uh, she loves salmon. And she always complained about the salmon that she eat out in the restaurant. And she always ordered the same thing. Sometimes it turned out good, sometimes it turned out poorly. And she asked me, what is the best way to cook salmon consistently? So I show her this method. But more importantly, in addition to able to cook salmon consistently, is that you can vary how you cook the salmon to give you many different variations. Now, if you never had really cooked salmon before, I think this is a template that you should learn. Now, salmon, without any question, from a nutritional standpoint, is a nutritional powerhouse. It is rich in omega-3 fatty acid. But more importantly is that a salmon goes very well with almost any type of food ingredients, with vegetables, with other type of meat, such as with shrimp, even with chicken. So you don't have to cook salmon all by itself. Now, most of the time when you go out to eat salmon, uh, you just get a piece of salmon. Sometimes you get a bit of vegetable on the side. And that is actually, uh, you are shortchanging yourself, not actually fulfill the potential of what the salmon can provide to you. So in this video, I would like to show you basically it's a salmon template. But this salmon template uh, can be modified uh, to include almost any type of other food ingredients that you want. But in this particular case, I cooked the salmon with pineapple. Now, you probably never had pineapple salmon before, but why not? So, if you learn this basic template, I can guarantee you that you will find salmon in a very, very different perspective. I think you will enjoy salmon in such a way that you might never have done in the past. So, I use my fast cooking system, which contains flavor chasing, advanced prepping, stir frying, and template based cooking. And this video, in many ways, uh, provide a, a conceptual a summary of all these four individual ingredient components of the fast cooking system. Now, the basic aspect of this cooking system is tempeh based cooking. The whole idea of tempeh based cooking is that uh, you can use a basic set of procedure and to create variations of this basic template. Now, in this case, this basic template is how to cook salmon. The important thing about cooked salmon is that you want to fry the salmon before you stir fry it because this will allow you to uh, seal in the flavor of the salmon. And more importantly is that it creates a firmer texture for the fresh. So when you stir fry it, the salmon will not fall apart. But the other part of this basic template is that it makes the salmon taste better. And that's the flavor chasing part of this template. Now, most people do not like the skin of the salmon. In fact, you can buy salmon without skin just by paying some extra. But you are missing out because the skin of the salmon actually is very flavorful as long as you fry it. If you can fry the skin of the salmon to the point that it's become crispy, it actually provides exceptional flavor to the salmon. And you can fry it uh, until it starts to char. That's even better. Again, it all depends. Some people like it char, which my wife absolutely like it char. There's one reason why this method actually makes the skin tasty. Because the skin normally has a lot of fat under the skin. And this fat actually rich in omega-3 fatty acid. However, this fat makes the skin taste fishy. And that's why people do not like um, the salmon skin. 
and also the oiliness of the skin are usually do not give you a good culinary experience. So as you can see here, what I'm doing is that uh, this particular salmon is a cold hot salmon. And one important aspect of this method is that I cut the salmon into smaller pieces. Now you said why? Well the answer is very straightforward uh, because you can now treat each little piece separately. You can control when you want to turn them, uh, you can control how long you want to cook them, and if you find that they might be a little bit overcooked, uh, you can take them out of the wok and set them aside and put them back later when all the other pieces are cooked properly. So as you can see here, uh, I fried the salmon on one side, now I'm frying the other side. Now one of the advantage of this template is that now you can incorporate vegetables and cook them all together. Now talking about efficiency, this is the most efficient way to uh, help you to cook many different food ingredients at the same time. And this is the power of stir frying. After I add the green bean, uh, I then add some the portobello mushroom. Now the portobello mushroom turned out to be really important in cooking of this template because the portobello mushroom uh, has the capacity to absorb the oil that are released by the salmon. And th this actually make the mushroom taste better but also retain the nutritional quality of the dish. So you are not wasting anything from all the food ingredients and the oil generated by the salmon. Now you're able to recapture the omega-3 fatty acid that are released by the salmon. As you notice that what I'm doing is that I move the vegetable over the salmon because I'm still cooking the salmon on the other side. Now this method is known as sequential stir frying, allowed you to cook each of the ingredients to its desired texture by adding individual ingredients to the wok in separate timing. And the result is that it will give you much better control of the doneness of the ingredients. Now I add some to minced garlic. Now again, all of these are done with a specific purpose. I add in the garlic later because my wife loves a strong garlic flavor. And if you want the flavor of the garlic strong, you add them later. If you want it not so strong, you add it earlier. For example, if you saute the garlic in the beginning, you probably will not taste the garlic very much because the garlic will be cooked. And sometimes it might get a little bit better depending on how long you cook them. Okay, now I start to use the wok spatula and to stir fry everything together. A couple of things I want you to notice that notice that there are no oil left at the bottom of the wok because it has been all absorbed by the mushroom as well as the green bean. Now this is where the flexibility come in. At this point I add some the colour bell pepper. They're sweet pepper and this is followed by addition of some pineapple. Now some people do not like cooked pineapple but I love cooked pineapple and this is where you can incorporate fruits uh, into your cooking. Again, this is the principle of sequential stir frying. I add the pineapple and the colored bell pepper later because I don't want to cook them too long. Then I'm going to flavor them very briefly uh, with some oyster sauce. Now th this is probably a lazy way to do it. If you want to be more sophisticated, uh, you can use different seasoning agents. You can use vinegar separate, you can use soy sauce, you can use sugar. There's infinite possibilities. But for me, the oyster sauce works great. Okay, now the dish is done. Imagine that you only spent five minutes to cook this dish. And on top of that, uh, you can make further adjustment. For example, uh, you can use the bit of my basic seasoning mix. Um, this will enhance the umami flavor of the dish. Again, you have plenty of possibility uh, to control the outcome how you cook this dish. Now remember, this is a template. You can exchange or substitute green bean with cauliflower, with broccoli, with snow peas, with asparagus, instead of pineapple, you can add some strawberry to it if you would like as in this particular instance. So there are enormous amount of possibilities. 
you can use only a few ingredients in your refrigerator and come up with many variations. And lastly, I add additional characteristics to the dish by adding some fresh scallions. Okay, I hope you see this an example of what you can do. I post a video each day. Uh, really, the main goal is to show you how I cook for myself and my wife uh, each day. And uh, I do not have a whole lot of ingredients, but I have enough that I can substitute them. I can make different combinations with them. Instead of salmon, I can use chicken and so on. So if you'd like to learn more about my fast cooking system, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. And I think you will find it would greatly enhance the practicality, efficiency, and creativity of your home cooking. So keep on cooking, and I will see you tomorrow.